Hey guys, welcome to this introduction video that will basically act as a starting point for the next two videos where I'll be giving you a walkthrough around my second life photography practices. This particular introduction isn't going to contain much information that you can actually learn from. It's done purely for my own sakes. Because when I personally watch video tutorials online, what I like to do is kind of go through the background of the artist in mind just to understand a little bit of where they come from and how that affects their process. So this video is going to be essentially just that. But I do know that not all of y'all are going to be interested and that's completely fine. And that's why I've kind of split it up into three different videos. If you guys want to see the introduction, feel free to stick around and watch this video. If you guys want to hop right into my second life process, what I do with wind lights and how I get everything set up, go straight to video part two. If you're interested in my Photoshop process, what I actually do in Photoshop in terms of editing, go to video part three. I essentially split everything up so that you can pretty much jump to whatever topic that you're interested in. At the same time, there's also going to be timestamps in both their description boxes, but with the timestamps, what you can do is just jump to each topic as easily as possible. So if you're coming back to kind of reference it in the future, that will kind of help you do that as well. So if you guys are going to jump to any of those two videos, please do so right about now and I'll see you guys there. For those of you who decided to stick around, I basically started Second Life in 2009. And the first week that I joined Second Life, I pretty much just dove right into taking pictures and then uploading it on Flickr. So back then, my experience in Photoshop was predominantly to create graphics for roleplay forums. So it was either graphics for my own characters or it was for forums that I was running. So in different roleplay forums, you essentially have a graphic display that represents either your character or yourself. If you guys belong to a roleplay forum, you know what I'm talking about. At the same time, I was also dabbling in a little bit of pixel art, more specifically pixel dolls. The creation of these pixel dolls involved drawing every single one of those elements pixel by pixel. That process taught me a lot about how to form an image by integrating a whole bunch of pixels together. As a teenager, I think what grew my love for computer graphics quite a bit was the combination of those two different hobbies plus each of their communities. The image that you see on the screen now is the first ever shot that I took out from Second Life. And funny enough, the intention was to kind of tell a story with the picture. And that is probably the only shot I ever done that did that. But in terms of how it looks, it's pretty bad. After this shot though, I did move straight into the blogging side of things and I pretty much became a blogger. At the same time, styling in Second Life way back then wasn't so much clothing styling, okay? Like it was pretty much about how you manipulated prims and sculpties to look somewhat presentable. I totally understand that, you know, all these shots are super irrelevant at this point in time. The reason why I brought up this period of time is because I genuinely believe that because of my lack of ability in controlling wind lights, I ended up spending a whole lot more time editing my shots and finessing my Photoshop skills. Looking at all these shots, they are very flat looking compared to what I do now, but I was trying to add in a lot of the shadows manually by painting over my images. Because of how frequently I was doing this process, by the end of 2011, I kind of developed my own style of editing. I was also a whole lot more comfortable with understanding what type of editing I should do for my avatar and what would work for the final image as an overall. So around 2012, that was the first time I kind of learned how to operate shadows and wind light. Back then I was an admin in Hogwarts Your Story and that was the sim before Mischief Managed. During that time, we were contacted by William Weaver who was interested in doing a machinima for Hogwarts Your Story. So I became like an unofficial tour guide for William and that was really when he kind of taught me how to turn on advanced lighting. If it wasn't for William, I honestly would never touch the shadows tab for another one or two years. So I really want to give him a shout out because I think he's an incredible photographer even up till this day. 
So even though I do know how to control shadows at that point, I do think that it worked a lot better when it comes to sculpties, prims, and meshes. When it starts to hit the system avatar, that's when things start to get really awkward looking. And I just never liked the way that my avatar responded to shadows. So I only turned shadows on for architecture shots, and I never touched it for Second Life avatars. So like I said, I was ignoring the use of shadows for avatars up till one point in time where we had to take promotional pictures for Mischief Managed and I stumbled across something by complete accident. So what happened was, I took a whole bunch of pictures in Second Life using different wind lights and we wanted to create this promotional image for the castle. But I couldn't decide on a wind light that I liked, so I ended up wanting to put everything together in Photoshop and showed the other admins, hey, these are the options, which one do you guys prefer? And then I accidentally switched one of the blend modes to overlay, and when I saw what happened to my image upon doing that, I was like, let me keep layering this and let's see where this is gonna go. And that was how I totally clumsily created this shot of Mischief Manage, which we did end up using as a promotional marketing image for the sim. Up till this day, this is still one of my most favorite shots that I've taken out from Second Life. I just felt like I stumbled across something super cool and called it Windlight Stacking. Back then, I didn't even know that it was mildly close to render compositing. Ever since then, that is pretty much the new style that I was working in. I was doing a lot of wind light stacking in Photoshop so that I can have the shadows on the mesh clothing and architecture items, but was still able to retain a flatter look on my avatar's face. And I did this for a really long time. But there came a point where I think I just got really frustrated because at the end of the day, as mesh progresses really quickly on the grid and everything starts to look way more realistic than it used to be, the Second Life avatar starts to take on a very backwards look. I felt this huge disconnect of my Second Life avatar against the rest of the virtual backdrop and that became a huge hindrance not only in terms of taking pictures but in terms of just walking around the grid. At the same time, I got a new real life job that was gearing up super quickly, so I just decided it was as good of a time as any to cut down the amount of time that I was spending in Second Life, and eventually that led me to leave Second Life for up to a year over, I think it was. This year, in 2017, I found myself coming back to Second Life as my real work started to wind down a little bit more, I've never wanted to switch to a mesh hit because of the lack of customization, but the moment bento hits were available and you could slide things around, I did make a switch to a mesh bento hit when they were finally available on the grid. I do think, however, that changing to a mesh bento hit is probably one of the biggest reasons why I noticed this year my images sort of took a very different turn in terms of how they were starting to look. When every single object in the scene integrates very well with one another, you find that there's a better consistency to your image, and that consistency is what produces a better look. So that's pretty much where I am at now when it comes to photography. I do hope that if you got anything out of this video at all, is that everything is about an evolution, a journey. You never get to a specific point in your skill set without working at it. Talent is one of those excuses that people seem to have for things, like saying they don't have a talent for something so they completely give up. But I do think when it comes to what exactly is the idea of talent, for me in arts, it's just someone's visual sense in something. And honestly, everyone has that. As humans, we're gravitated to things that look either really beautiful or unique to us. It's almost a natural instinct that everyone has. Obviously, what is beautiful and unique is subjective, but that subjectivity is exactly what that is. That's your art sense, and that's your visual sense. But the art sense and visual sense honestly doesn't get anywhere unless it's being fed and grown. So to get better at anything, whatever it may be, could be art, or it could be any other type of skill set, it never takes talent, it just takes interest, work, and time. All those three things combined are what's going to get you anywhere that you want to go. Be interested in wanting to get better and experiment, put in the work to do those two things, 
And ultimately, with time, when you look back, you're going to see that there's a growth. So anyways, thank you for watching this video. I honestly hope that my journey gives you a better perspective of where I'm at, as well as a glimpse to some of the things I'd like to teach you in the two videos following this. I hope that the two videos is going to provide you with some new tips and tricks that you can integrate into your own workflow, and I look forward to seeing you guys in both of them.